The mysteries of life on earth are beginning to unfold before our eyes. The last three decades have been a golden age in our understanding of ourselves and the natural world around us. Today, because of drugs, people are living with HIV, cancers are being treated, cholesterol lowered, and many other conditions are being managed and sometimes even cured. And there's an expectation that the pace of discovery is destined to continue, even increase. But if you talk to many scientists, even those who have worked in the pharmaceutical industry, you get a much different picture. The medicines that we need for ourselves or for our children or our children's children may be at jeopardy. Bill Chen has seen the growing crisis in drug development from many perspectives. He currently is the executive dean of research at Harvard Medical School, where he came after spending over a decade leading drug discovery research at the pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly. I don't think the public in general is aware of how drugs are made, how difficult it is to make medicines, how difficult it is to make drugs that work very well and also are safe. These are major challenges for every single medicine. Currently, it costs on average well over a billion dollars to produce each new drug. That's billion with a B. And that's because trying to develop new medicines is a hit or miss business. Consider this, by the time a drug hits phase three trials, companies have already pumped hundreds of millions of dollars into research and testing to make this final and most expensive step as sure a bet as possible. But roughly half of new drugs don't make it through phase three trials. That's right, 50% fail. The overall ecosystem in which we develop and approve drugs is fundamentally flawed. Jeff Flyer became dean of Harvard Medical School four years ago and immediately set out an ambitious plan. Bridge the gap between basic research and clinical therapies. He brought Dr. Chen in to help him execute this vision. The success rate of going from fundamental insights about a molecular pathway or a genetic defect and taking that into effective therapies, the success rate has been much less than anyone would like. And one of the routes to understanding what the problem is, I think, is to reframe the way we conceive of how drugs work. Dr. Flyer is leading an institution with an illustrious history, stretching back more than 300 years. But he sensed that exciting new advances in basic research had opened up a unique window for action. Hey, Ed and he found that a newly created department at Harvard University already contained the seeds to allow his vision to grow. It's called systems biology, and it itself represents a new frontier in science. The idea is that the traditional disciplines of biology and chemistry are too narrow to make sense of the complexity taking place at the molecular and cellular level. So the systems biology department also brings together physicists, computer scientists, mathematicians, and engineers. Systems biology is a dedication of scientists to this new level of understanding. Mark Kirshner is the founding chair of Harvard Systems Biology Department, which he has built into a world-renowned leader in this burgeoning field. It's that aspect of systems biology that deals with the action of drugs. Because, in fact, drugs act in a complex system, and often their effects are unpredictable. Very often their effects are unpredictable. And drugs really are essentially a probe of every biological system. It perturbs those biological systems. So as we begin to understand systems and how they behave, we have a better understanding of how drugs affect those systems. And as we understand how drugs perturb systems, we learn more about the nature of the systems themselves. At first glance, the department has the look and feel of traditional biology labs. But when you listen to the discussions and see the exploration that's taking place, you immediately see there's a lot more going on. 
Sure, the goal of systems biology remains understanding the mechanisms of life. It's just the scientists here go about that a bit differently. And my laboratory's specific interest is developing computational methods largely derived from engineering disciplines that will allow us to reason across these very compl complex phenomena. Peter Sorga is another professor in the systems biology department. He says that the complexities of life, such as how different types of cells use similar processes to achieve different goals, calls out for creating detailed mathematical modeling like you see in physics, engineering, and computer science. So one of the ideas that we're trying to bring from engineering disciplines to bear on the problem of studying drugs is known as failure analysis. So when there is an aircraft disaster, enormous effort is put to recovering all the pieces of the airplane and famously the black box so that those can be brought back to a laboratory and the precise failure studied in great detail. Remarkably, that type of study is almost never applied in the pharmaceutical industry. And we know very little about the failures. We don't know what was wrong. Was some idea early on wrong? Was the drug itself wrong? Was the clinical trial done incorrectly? So we're very interested in the idea of bringing failure analysis to bear on pharmaceutical development. The need for failure analysis is another aspect of the startling level of agreement among academics, pharmaceutical company researchers, and doctors that the way we now develop drugs is fundamentally flawed. We leave an enormous amount of relevant information on the table, unexamined, and the goal is to reframe the whole way that we go from fundamental science to therapeutic discovery. And it's a, it's a great moment because the pharmaceutical and biotech industry is seemingly aware of this as well. They don't know how to address it, but uh, I think that together we can, we can do something rather remarkable. If we're going to solve the big issues, if we're going to cure disease, if we're going to make drugs, we can't do it one protein, one molecule at a time. We have to understand the system in which that molecule is working. End of story. Pam Silver is a professor of systems biology. She created Harvard's graduate program in systems biology in 2004, and she says biology is once again competing with high tech as the place to be for the best young minds. Yes, this one's, that one's producing biofuels. The graduate program now gets hundreds of applicants from all over the world and from multiple scientific disciplines for a coveted 10 slots. As silicon was the technology of last century, biology is the technology of this century. And that's what systems biology is about. Because they had things like hoax, right. Alexa 48, and that didn't work. So for me, the evidence of the excitement comes from the fact that young people want to be involved. And that's telling me that this is the place to be. To be sure, much of the promise surrounding systems pharmacology remains speculative. Academics aren't used to thinking about the process of drug discovery, but even for veteran scientists like department chair Mark Kirshner, the prospects are exciting. I have to say, one of the greatest sources of satisfaction I've had in my long scientific career has been this Department of Systems Biology. So I'm, I'm encouraged by the advances we've made so far, which I think have been significant, but more than that, by the creation of a kind of a new breed of, of scientists, particularly the young people who are being cross-trained in all these disciplines, who really see the promise of this field and are completely dedicated to it. For Kirshner, for the professors and students in the department, for the leadership of the medical school and those outside of the university who are inspired by what they're seeing, there's a growing hope that we may be entering an era when we get a lot better at treating diseases. What's particularly exciting about system pharmacology is it's not just devoted to one disease, but can affect drug discovery for many, many diseases and have a huge impact on medicine.